Universities that are truly at the top of the chain tend to be known not only for their research but also for uh, other things such as the impact on, on the discipline. This is an institution that really sets the uh, state of the art. I make microfluidic devices that can be very useful for developing personalized medicine. I'm a tool developer, and that's the core that mechanical engineers can provide. We know how to design, how things move, how to make it more efficient. Currently, we have funding from the Air Force to look at how to control flows over aircraft wings using computer simulation software. But we are able to take those same simulation tools and apply that to understand how blood clots form in the heart, how birds fly, how insects move about. These are interesting materials that not a lot of people know how to characterize and, um, and model. And that's what we do is we figure out how, to, how they work by developing new techniques to study the mechanics of the eye. We're interested in trying to develop a more scientific fundamental understanding of um, what we call our human haptic perception or our human touch perception. If you're interested in the medical robotics field, I would say that Hopkins actually can't be beat. I was really interested in coming to Hopkins because of its very large interdisciplinary action. Not only do you work inside the department, you work outside the department and even far reaching to companies and research institutions. When you work in industry, you have to be able to talk to the average person as well as the scientific person, which I don't think as a graduate student I really appreciated until I had to do both. I really wanted a program that came to the intersection of like mechanics and computing. I run my code on supercomputers, and when it's paralyzed, it can run on hundreds of thousands of processors. What sets us apart is our ability to apply these tools to a wide variety of problems, and also take advantage of the incredible opportunities for collaboration that exist in a place like Johns Hopkins. Any research project that you can think of and you're looking for a collaborator, there's a good chance that you'll find the world's expert in that topic right here in Hopkins. My students will learn a lot of experimental skills, but in addition to that, they will interact with my collaborating doctors so that they understand the real problem that they have to tackle when they establish their career. I'm interested in the control and navigation of underwater robotics, specifically autonomous vehicles. Hopkins provides world-class facilities like our Hydro Lab, which has a 42,000 gallon tank in the JHU ROV, along with close collaborations with the Woodsville Oceanographic Institution. Coming to Johns Hopkins has allowed me to kind of take my career in any direction, whether I want to work in academia, go to industry, or maybe a national lab. I have all of those opportunities and I've been able to work with someone in every one of those disciplines to kind of get a feel for what I want to do. I work very closely with my students. We meet every week and they'll get a lot of personal attention, a lot of guidance and mentorship. I usually know the ins and outs of their work in the beginning. Later on, they'll know much more than I will. I chose Hopkins primarily for my advisor. I felt like establishing that bond and establishing you know, what seemed like a pretty close-knit research group was, was key towards my uh, academic and graduate career. Very quickly, you know, students become the leaders on these projects, the thought leaders on these projects. And that's the kind of environment that we try to foster here. Johns Hopkins has set me up to be successful in terms of my career, academically, as well as in real world experience. I anticipate that there's going to be a lot of things happening here in the future, and I think it's being exciting to be a part of that.